we're going to learn about the 3D cursor. In older versions of Blender, this was one of the main ways of creating new objects. So how you could get this to work, you'll see out here you have the 3D cursor as an object, as a, an option here in the menu. You click on it and wherever you click, you'll have a cursor now. So what that means is that when you add a new object, if you're in the in the editor here, the 3D viewport, which we're in right now, you'll see a menu up here. We have add and we could let's say add, let's say a cube, another cube. It will add it to where the 3D cursor is. So if I click here, add another cube, basically wherever you click, you can do add, say a circle, it will add it wherever you put your, your cursor. say cylinder exactly so now you could also select the cursor by moving it if you stay let's say in box mode or tr transform mode or move or rotate if you hold shift and right click on your mouse you could drag where the cursor is without being in the mode or click where you want it to be so if i click here and then remember you could do add here but you could also press shift a and then you could choose a mesh and say um a torus here it will add it there that's another way you could add it now what if you want to reset the cursor to go back to the origin you could put the cursor at different places for example if i want to reset it back to the origin you'll go to object then you go to snap and then you'll say cursor to world origin and it'll go back if i want to put the cursor let's say at this box i can select the box or the cube go to object snap cursor to select it and it'll put a cursor there so then i could add another object let's say cursor sorry add mesh monkey and if i press the slash key which could be the question mark key but it's on the left side of the shift key on a, like an american keyboard it will isolate and you could see that you could press the slash key again to uh, unisolate the selected to go back or you could move it out to see what it looks like Another thing about the cursor is that when you click on it, I'm going to use the shift right click. If I click on an object surface, it's going to recast or hit that surface. So when I create, if you look on it, if I go close to it, it's going to create it on where it hit. So it's not like going to hit to the, go to the ground where you project it, wherever it hit, where you project it. Where you click and it'll project an array and hit the first face it hits, that's where it's going to create it. So, so let me show you that again. Let's if I, if I hold shift and right click, it will, it's wherever it hits on that surface. If I go to add mesh, let's say monkey is going to, if I press the period key on my number pad, it will focus on there. It's going to create it where it hit right there on the surface. Okay, so that's done here. Uh, another thing I want to show, I could reset this, go to file new, general, uh, don't save. So I reset the scene. The manipulator or the icons for the manipulators here, you could take click on the edge of it and drag it out to, to see what it looks like. And you see these little like uh, something in the corner right, right there. That means there's a drop down menu for it. Same thing here. Or you could click it and drag it all the way to the edge on the inside and you'll have that little like uh, twirl thing to twirl it out. But if you cl click on it, it'll go back. Or you could just click back here. So if you go here, click it will show it or click on the edge and drag it to the side to hide it. So same thing on the right side here. You could show this by pressing the N key to show the transform and you get that whole menu. If you press N again, it will hide it, but you could also, if you're not pressing the N key, you could click on, click on the icon and it'll open it, but to bring it back, you click on the edge and drag it to the, to the side. Now I'm going to press the N on the keyboard again to open that up, or you could drag it to the side or click on it to open it. We'll see that we have location, which is basically move or translate a position, rotation. And you have different modes for that, which we'll explain later. It's probably more important when it comes to animation and rigging or setting up an armature. You have scale, but what I want to show here, dimension and scale are related or basically representation of the same type of thing. Kind of like what we showed earlier 
if we go on a select an object in the object display if you go to the viewport display you have a color here you have rg well rgb representation h so that's red green blue representation of color or hsv or hue saturation value representation of a color hexadecimal basically they're all describing the same color but in different ways you could think of scale and dimension in something similar where if i were to scale i select this object scale it in x so the x-axis i could see well when i have the visual guide the red over here and i could see that with my view port overlay it's on right um for the guide axis here so if i go into scale click on it and drag it you'll see both the scale x and the dimension move so relative to the object the scale is 111 or the transformation matrix its identity is 111 but in terms of the measurement it's two meters so depending on what you're working on if you're working in terms of measurement let's say you're building out a scene or a set dressing and you have the measurements and it matters and you're going by that knowing a scale of one might not mean anything to you in that context but knowing well this is two meters in the x dimension and want it to be three meters might make sense and you can see here three meters gets updated for the scale because three meters represents is represented 1.5 in terms of scale and x in that sense so if i put that back to one on the scale x the dimension for x will get changed to two and if i wanted to put it to let's say the x dimension to be two meters what that means in scale i mean i could type in four i mean okay if i want dimension x to be four meters i mean i could type it in here but that also means that the scale on the x dimension or the scale for x axis here if I press 2, it's going to be 2 times that amount, so that means that dimension is 4, right? And if I said um, 6, that's three times, the, 3 times the amount of what the original one, because one is rep when the scale of 1 is represented in 2 meters. So that's just understand a little bit of the scale and dimension, two different representation of the same thing here. And another thing we could do let's say I, I go to add mesh monkey i'll go to a move tool here and i'll move it on the x-axis over here just to see so let's say i wanted to rotate this monkey the head 90 degrees here i could choose a rotate button and i could start rotating but you notice we'll notice up here where as i rotate you'll see the number of the rotation show up so i'll press ctrl z to reset that notice up here you'll see the number of the rotation so it tells me i'm in rotation the motor's global but it should be okay in this sense because if you look over here it is actually just moving the y-axis on the rotation i'll press ctrl z to start it again but okay so if i want some precision see right now if i were to do it well one you could just go in and say one to 90 degrees i could just type it in that's fine that works um whoops ctrl z and i'll press z to go back to my solid mode so if let's say you i didn't have this open i press n button and i wanted to rotate this 90 degrees what you could do is hold the the modifier keys on your keyboard meaning control is a modifier key shift is a modifier key and alt is a modifier key in this case if i hold control i'll go by five degrees increments so i could go and you'll see the manipulator change with these ticks on the side to let you know you're in that mode so i could put it into 90 degrees here and if i press n well i could see it in the because i'm in the object property i could see it here in rotation 90 degrees or if i press n to see the transform here i see it's 90 degrees i can press Control z to undo if i hold see so as i'm i'm just clicking and dragging left clicking and dragging i'm not holding a modifier key it's moving relatively quick if i get let's say around here and i want to be a little more precise i could hold shift and you'll see the values go really small at that point so it's a lot more precise if you want to work that way Control z to undo and another thing is let's say again i'll hide n let's say i'm working in this mode and let's say i'm control space bar i'm um, in full full screen mode for this editor right and i'm i'm rotating this and i know this i want it to be 90 degrees 
And so what I could do is while I'm still holding the left mouse button, I could just type in 90 either on the key, the number numbers above the keyboard, the, the letters of your keyboard or the numpy, the number pad, and then press enter after it. And then that number will just be baked in. So I press control spacebar again to go back to the mode. You'll see while I'm in the object property mode that it, it actually did do 90 on the axis I was started to manipulate. Or if I press N or I just click this to bring it out, you'll see that it's 90 degrees. So those are other ways you could manipulate or update your values in your viewport. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.